All right, what is up, guys? It's Zero here, and uh, some of you guys wanted to see it, so we will be finishing up as many deck profiles as we can on end of server. So, uh, you got two months to speed run as many decks as possible. Uh, first up, we got uh, Shushu. So, this is one of the many, many fish decks that came out of the last energy, and uh, this is uh, personally one of the archers I actually really do like, but uh, unfortunately, all the Bermuda decks kind of pale in comparison to what Coral does. So. Um, the, the remainder of the fish decks on my panel are all just like for fun kind of decks, but yeah, uh, regardless, we'll be, we'll be taking a look at Shushu today, so without further ado, let's take a look at the deck. So, uh, we'll start from top to bottom as per usual, so our starter is, uh, her, I don't know her name, but her skill is, um, uh, at the, I think it's, uh, like at the end of the battle that it, um, and it boosted. Or something. I think it's like Soul Blast one, uh, and put a Shushu rear into uh, to the bottom of your deck, and draw a card. And then you can put her into Soul and give three of your units, uh, three of your Shushu units, five K power each. So, uh, what she does is um, the important thing that she does is that she bot she can bot deck your cards before uh, GB, and uh, by being able to do that, uh, you can proc one of your extenders, mainly being uh, her. Uh, we'll go uh, once we get to her, uh, the one of the grade twos. That uh, can actually extend before GB. So if you go first, you can uh, actually use it to push for damage. So it's really nice there that she can uh, proc your uh, extender early. Uh, she can also proc your uh, other cards early um, that need that uh, get effects when bottom deck. Uh, the main one being this great one here. So I guess we'll just go over this. So her skill is very simple. Uh, when she's put to the bottom, your, when she's put back into your deck, soul tra soul charge one, counter charge one. So uh, she fuels you your soul. So she refunds the cost for the soul, and then she also counter charges one. So very good there so yeah the, the starter just lets you enable a bunch of your um a bunch of your cards and then uh, when you don't need any more you can print it soul for more power which is also really nice so yeah and uh, we, went, we went over this great one the next great one going over is the um is the uh like it's like the uh it's like the, it's the searcher for the deck so it's like your shard fodder but except it's not actually a shard fodder but her skill is on place from hand uh you can ditch a card to search your deck for a tutia so tutia is the main ride is your main grade three so uh she tutors her main ride very very good and then um, at the end of your turn, if you have a Tutti of Vanguard, you can Soul Blast one for her to the bottom of the deck and counter charge one. So another CC, very, very nice. And she goes to the bottom deck. So uh, that's just what the deck does. So it's uh, really nice there. Uh, next, we're playing four of the Shushu PG. So uh, PG, so uh, you, uh, just keep on, you do need a Shushu Van for this PG to work, but everything in this deck is a Shushu. So even if you miss ride, this PG will still work because uh, all your grade threes do have Shushu in name. And then her other skill is Drop Zone. Uh, when, when you're rear guard is put to the bottom of your deck you can cv1 and put another copy of herself from drop to the bottom of your deck and add her back to your hand and then discard one uh, i think there's a discard one on this but uh yeah uh pseudo let's take a pseudo recycle pg even multiple so uh pretty nice there uh again that's your name so that's why you're playing it even if you don't use the second effect uh to re uh, return from drop you still play it because it has your name in it so yeah uh that there's that and then the one of her skill is um on place, you can uh, discard a grade three, I think. Uh, on place, you discard a grade three, and then check top seven and call a and add a grade two or higher Shushu unit from among that top seven to your hand. So you can dig for stuff, and then her other skill is a hand and rear. If your vanguard is specifically the grade three Tertia, when you're paying for stride, you can pay the cost of stride uh, with either discard her or retire her, uh, depending on where she is. Uh, depending on where she is. Uh, Obviously, if she's in your hand, you discard her. If she's on board, you retire her. So, Stride Flutter, I can dig for stuff. Uh, just the one of them, I think the CC, uh, I think she's much more valuable in my opinion. You can play around the ratios of these two, I think. But I personally think that this deck uh, struggles with, not really struggles, but really does value extra soul and extra uh, CB to play around with. So, I personally think this is a little better, but I think this card's a perfectly serviceable card as well. That's just the one of, but if you want to play more, you can uh, definitely cut down on her to play more if you want to. That's it for the grade ones. Grade twos, my one of is uh, her. Uh, her skill is uh, when GB1, when your Shushu is put the bottom of your deck, and you CB1 for her to the bottom deck as well. Draw one and then call a Shushu card from your hand to your rear, and then uh, give that unit plus 3k. So she's an extender, but she's a little more awkward because you need to actually have another card in your hand to call it down. So I personally don't like her as much, but if you want more extenders, you can definitely play more of her if you want to. I'm only playing one because I personally really value this grade two. So her skill is GB1. If your Vanguard is a Shushu, she gets, she gets plus 2k and she gives all of your uh, grade 2 units with Shushu boost and resist. So 
Uh, except for herself. I think she, I'm pretty sure she herself does not gain resist, unfortunately. Uh, I could be wrong, I don't actually remember, but uh, she gives your boy, she can give all your intercepts resist as well as just being, uh, giving more boosters, um, giving you uh, access to more boosters because now your grade threes and grade ones are boosters as well. And, and uh, having boosters is definitely really nice, even though you're probably bot decking them a lot for cost, but still uh, having boosters, having access to more boosters is definitely really good. Uh, but I'm mainly playing her because I like the part where she gives resist to everything. And again, if you want to play more extender, just cut down on her. She's definitely the most, uh, she, uh, her and the uh, one of grade two that I'm playing is definitely like the flex spot that actually you can definitely swap these ratios around. Depending on how, um, on, um, what you personally want in your deck, you want more extenders or more ways to boost, resist, uh, etc, etc. And, uh, speaking of extenders, your next, the next two creatures are both extenders for the deck. So her skill is, uh, once per turn when a, uh, a card is put to the bottom of your deck, if your Vanguard is a Tyria, you can Soul Blast 1 and Counter Blast 1 to stand her and give her plus 5. So uh, when I said extender earlier, that's what I meant. Uh, a, a really common line you make when you're going first is um, you can play her down, you swing her into a rear, and then you you uh, boost with the starter with the, with, uh, the van, and then you buy deck something, and then you use her skill to stand her and, and uh, try to push for an extra damage. So uh, she's good early game, but she's also obviously good late game because uh, she's still an extra attack. So yeah, very, very good. Definitely a 4 of. And next one is also an extender. So uh, her uh, first skill is a restriction on place ban rear. If you have, uh, uh, or not on place, if you have uh, one or less Shushu rear guards, uh, she cannot attack, I think, or cannot attack a van. Or if she either couldn't attack a van, she couldn't attack. But uh, just, just basically when she's on the board, just, just make sure you have cards on the board. And, she, and uh, if you ride her, make sure like you have uh, one extra rear, I think, aside from your starter. So. Just keep that in mind, and then GB1 once per turn. Uh, when a Shushu, when a card is put to the bottom of your deck, you can CB1, check top five, and uh, if all the cards from among them are have either Shushu name or is a grade zero heal card, you can choose a Shushu from among those five and call it to rear. So uh, basically, when you put stuff back for cost and all that, you put stuff to the bottom, use her skill, uh, you can check top five and call a card. Uh, even if you put her back to the bottom of the deck as cost, she still works because her skill is. Uh, still prompted so it gets put on standby so uh, you can put her back and then just call something into her slot that she was in so yeah uh, tanky base as well so can uh, help with early aggro or uh, help prevent early aggro so uh, good, very good car all around extender and a big body so yeah definitely a, uh, definitely your the best extenders that deck has between uh, uh, is uh, these two uh, and again if you want more extenders you need to play more of this great one and uh, and she's also the reason why you need to play all shushu because if you just happen to play like a non shushu or of some sort and you reveal it off the top and you wanted to call something you can't call anymore if you reveal the non shushu so yeah uh that's why the entire main deck aside from the heal guards have to be shushus and that's a grade two grade threes uh heal guards are heal guards uh next is your main ride we're playing uh obviously four of our main ride the utoria so her skill is uh gb1 if you have one or less cards on your board uh you can strive for free so uh very very nice uh we're still playing draws in the deck because uh this deck really does need to draw into its extenders to actually get uh, multiple attacks off. So you still need to draw uh, for that. And that's why I'm still playing draws. Uh, I've definitely seen one of those play like crits and stuff, but I think draws in this deck are still correct. And uh, her other skill is uh, on stride, you can CB1 and draw one. Then um, if the card you drew is a Shushu, you uh, you may, I think it's like you may reveal it. And then if you do, you can bot deck on your Shushu rears if you do draw another card. So. Uh, Realistically, the second skill, I don't think I've ever actually used it because I'd rather, more more often than not, I'd rather keep the stuff on my board. So uh, her stride bonus skill basically reads CB1, draw 1, which is fine for what it is. Not amazing, not terrible. Uh, it's just there. You don't use it all the time anyways because you're already plussing for free for striding for free. So a lot of times your hand is very full. So uh, because of that, uh, stride bonus is just, is, is just an option in case you do need more cards in hand. But uh, a lot of times you don't even use it. And then her... Uh, then she has the usual uh, on ride plus three kicks, so pretty solid there. Our one upgrade three is uh, I think the uh, GB2 when she's uh, bounced back to hand, you can give uh, three units plus five K. Not a whole lot of cards in the deck that bounce, so uh, I'm only playing this one I just just for name. I could be wrong on this effect. I actually just don't remember what she does, but uh, yeah, uh, that's there. And then we're, the last grade three is uh, her. <laughs> so her skill is GB2 when she's put to the bottom of the deck, you give me a plus five K. I know that comes up a lot because. Um, a lot of times you just throw great things back to the bottom of your deck, yeah, regardless of what triggers are on, you, you throw them back just because you rather have intercepts on the board and stuff and such, so this can give something plus 5, so very nice, and then um, she has two van skills, I 
do not remember what the van skill is uh but she does have a van skill i think it's an on stride cb1 ditcher card uh check top two cards of your deck and call two shushus from among them something like that uh she's not the ride you want to be on but uh because you're i'm only mainly playing just because she has the rear skill where she, when she gets what you can get power and she has your name but uh, since she has a van skill, she's not a terrible misride, I guess, but more than often not, you just want to be on Turia because Turia lets you strive for free. And uh, that's her play main deck. G-Zone, a lot of it really does not matter, but uh, we're playing the Megiddo. I don't. I think in the video, I, I think in the games, I wasn't even playing the Megiddo because I forgot about it. But uh, yeah, uh, that just goes to show how important Megiddo is in, is in this deck. So it's Megiddo, Megiddo can be whatever you want it to be. Harmonics, obvious. Um, Olivia, uh, she is just the most generic bermuda stride so we we're playing two of it not much to say uh she's just a generic stride that has a crit might come up uh four uh, laprinas or lapria or laprina whatever uh, whatever her name was uh uh when this unit attacks if you have a shushu heart cv1 g flip and uh for every face up card in your g zone you can put uh, you can put uh up to two cards on your board back to bond your deck and draw um and draw uh, cards equal to the number of cards you put plus one if you drew four or more, you can call any number of cards from your hand. So uh, uh, on first try, she just puts two. Uh, you, you can put like two back and then draw three. And since on first try, you only have one face up, you can't actually extend with it. So that's where all your extenders come in. Because uh, if you just put that to the bottom, uh, both her and her will, and I guess her two, will prompt, uh, which will let you extend. So uh, yeah. Uh, on first try, she's usually your first try. As you can see here in the G zone, a lot of these cards need GB. Um, Olivia is GB2. Uh, you're not going to Harmonix. You're not going to Megiddo first stride. Anja's GB2. And uh, the Turia stride is GB3 for the relevant part of the effect. So uh, Lapria is your first stride in this deck. And uh, to push damage to this deck on first stride, you actually need to have an extender because your band is not helping you extend at all on first stride. Which kind of sucks, but uh, this card at worst does just filter your hand out. So uh, pretty solid there. And we're playing. And I, think, I do think this deck needs four of this card because. Uh, you need one pair for first stride, and then afterwards you might want another pair to actually end the game with if you don't draw extenders. Because uh, if you don't have extenders, Lapria is still more checks than um, than the Tudia stride. So uh, so yeah, that, that's why we're playing four of it. Uh, one on just to bounce stuff. Uh, you never know when uh, your board might get locked. Uh, you never know when you just want to bounce stuff. You never know when you just might want a really big van. So we're playing the one on. And uh, finally, we're playing three of the Turia. Uh, you probably don't need three. I think two is probably more than enough, but uh, I am playing three myself. But her skill is on on place. If you have a Shushu Heart, you can uh, flip any card in your face up, uh, any card in your G zone face up. So that's why you don't need multiples of her. Uh, she one copy is all she needs because uh, the skill that she gains is um, uh, during your turn, uh, all your Shushu Bridge gets five, plus 5k for every empty rear guard circle you have. So uh, yeah, uh, make sure board really big and then her. Uh, Second skill is the skill you you're mainly playing her for, uh, but it's a GB three once per turn. At the end of the battle, she's gonna attack. You can choose to put uh, up to three rear guards back to the bottom of your deck. If you put three, stand her, draw one. She gets my drive minus two. So uh, what? Uh, she's a vanguard restand that bot deck stuff. So it's really really nice there because uh, bot deck and stuff means you can proc all your um, extenders. And then with in, in the in tandem with her first skill, your rears get really big. So uh, even if you hypothetically just put like all your boosters back or whatever, or you only have three to put back, uh, your board is still plus fifteen because you, because uh, uh, hypothetically just say you have like a full empty board, you have you have exactly three units on the board. You put them all back and um, you just say you had like two of her, you proc one of each, and now you call two more to the front row, and everything is plus fifteen because you have your entire back row empty. So yeah, uh, very very good there. Uh, she's your she's usually just right that you go into past um, uh, past uh. A second try onwards this is usually the only thing you go into but again like i said if you um don't have your extenders in hand the uh, laprina or lapria or which one's the correct name uh she gets you more checks uh if you don't have you you don't have your extenders otherwise uh Turdio will always get you more checks because a van swings twice and then you have your rear two rears will probably reset so yeah uh, uh best best stride in the deck and uh just the uh, overall really good card and uh that's it for the deck profile for this deck uh, I do implore you to try stuff out yourself. I, this is not the most tested list. This is just a list I kind of threw together. Played a few games with and found that it worked well enough for my liking. So yeah, uh, definitely try. Uh, I definitely implore you to try a little bit more out yourself if you really, really like, like, really, really like this deck. 
Uh, but uh, regardless, uh, let's just get on to some games, so I'll see you guys there. So, for our first game, we are playing against Royals. So, uh, yeah, no, no, I, I don't really know, not a whole lot I can think of to say. Uh, this deck really, this deck really just does, just does its own thing, uh, like basically every other deck in this game. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, it's just, it's definitely a fish deck that plays uh, like a little bit differently than, than, um, than your usual premium deck. Because most premium decks, they like bounce stuff and they uh, call stuff back out like that. This like bottom deck stuff and call stuff back out like that. So, uh, I, I guess that's like the slight variance there. When we, we do go second, uh, your mulligan. Uh, the main thing you want to be trying to find is your grade 3. That is like the main thing you want. Uh, Turia is a very, very good grade 3, um, in my opinion, because just because uh, the free stride is very, very nice. Uh, after, like, once you once you start playing with decks that get the stride for free, you basically don't ever want to play a deck afterwards that doesn't stride for free. So, yeah, uh, Turia letting you try for free is definitely, in my opinion, one of the, um, the main selling points of this deck and why I think this deck is actually really strong because, um, uh, in my opinion, if you don't have to clog your deck up with stride fodder, uh, you, you get to fill in your deck with more grade one slots, right? And because of that, uh, uh, you get to play like higher quality cards in your deck. And Turia, again, she has to try for free. And so uh, you get to play higher quality grade ones in your deck. It also really helps that the, uh, that the uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the grade one that actually searches your Turia, uh, the second skill is actually really good too, because uh, not only does she clear herself off the board, uh, so that you can actually fulfill the stride condition for free, She's a CC as well, so uh, really, really good there. So uh, unlike the unlike your usual tripoders, where once you slam them down on the board, they're just kind of like bricks there that don't feel good at all to have on your board. They don't really contrib contribute to much to your gameplay other than be a booster. Uh, the grade one in this in this deck uh, that searches your um, the grade one in this, the grade one in this deck that searches your uh, what you want to call it uh, that searches your um, uh, what's one that, that searches your grade three actually contributes to your game plan once it's on the board so it doesn't feel dead so very very nice there uh here we just push i'm just like it's whatever i slam hand down i'll push i can draw stuff back later uh and here you see i think i actually think the starting to hit i think i actually do not remember so we just do that just to draw a card uh, i actually i actually was looking for stride fodder here because uh, uh tur even though terrier can stride for free uh it is gb1 so you're you still have to pay stride cost for your first stride so here i actually did need to find a grade three to actually ditch the stride otherwise i'll ditch two cards and we did draw one off of that, so pretty nice there. Uh, he does his thing. He goes first. He does his thing. Calls call stuff down. Uh, I actually don't know why he didn't use Alt Miles uh, on place to call another grade two. And he's end up calling two out of his hand, so cool, I guess. Uh, so yeah, he does his thing. We just quickly, you know, we just quickly skim through his turn. Not a whole lot going goes on with with this deck. So yeah, we just uh, he just uh, quick quickly uh, scroll through his turn. Uh, he does that. Oh, oh, guess it's my turn now. Uh, yeah, he is swing rear, swing rear, swing van. Not, not, not a whole lot. Nothing really special or anything. Oh, yeah, I guess we'll just play through. Uh, it's just, uh, I think I'm skipping a little bit too far. So he does his thing. He just swings. No triggers or anything. His deck definitely seems a little bit whack because you definitely don't play a lot of those great twos anymore. Uh, you definitely do not play fragment. You definitely do not play tackle anymore. And here, yeah, we ride the Turia, and again, uh, Laprina or Lapria, I can never remember which one's the actual correct name for her. Uh, she is your first stride, so I'll be going to her. And here, my hand is not the best, but I do not have too many playables in it, so we will use the stride bonus here just to draw a card. Draw one, add it to hand, and uh, and as you can see, most of the time, you, ch you usually choose to not... Uh, you usually choose to not use a skill to put one of your rears back to the bottom uh, because uh, a lot of times the only card on your board is your starter. So, uh, uh, what you call? So, uh, oh my lord! Excuse the uh, technical difficulties here, but yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of times your your starter is uh, the only thing on your board, and you usually do want to keep it. Uh, but uh, uh, a time where you will actually will put what you call it uh, a time where you actually will put uh, what you call it uh, to the bottom uh, is a card to the bottom with the tribe bonus is if you find a uh, is if you find a copy of the um, is if you find a copy of the uh, what's that card I'm looking for is the uh, if you have a copy of the grade one that that went bought next you get the CC one if you have a copy of her uh, you probably will put that to the bottom. And here, a play you see me here do is I put a heal back, I put a draw back, I put so I just put two cards back, whatever, 
and then I um, immediately used I used the tank anchor two to uh, call something over to the other side and uh, see there. I also managed to use the um, which I call it the um, the grace three as caught them one put back to the bottom to uh, also um, which I call it uh, to uh, to uh, uh, be put back to the bottom so I can give the thing that I called as an extender an extra power, a more power to make sure it scales in there. I also have three triggers. My hand is quite big, so uh, even though I can try for front, I'll probably end up uh, tossing the shrine anyways, just to not have too many cards in my hand. And uh, there you'll see the the, the grade one that uh, that searches the the, the Eternia. We'll use her to put herself back because if I don't put her back, I won't have enough to sharp for free if I wanted to do it. So you do need to keep in mind that um, to actually sharp for free every turn, you need to make sure you, you clear out your board. So obviously your opponent will clear out your intercepts for you. So basically, you just need to make sure that you have uh, only one back row going into your turn. So uh, a board set like this is usually what you want to end your turn off as. Uh, so two ints and like one back row at most, so you can try for free. Obviously, in this situation, you might cons you'll probably consider tossing the try anyways, just so you don't overhand whatever you draw. So yeah, well, that's something to keep in mind. So uh, my opponent here. Oh my god, why is this not skipping properly? You know, he he'll do his thing. Uh, he actually has like a bunch of intercepts, so I actually uh, went to Anj here, which uh, in hindsight probably was not the correct play. And uh, my opponent here also did not realize that he could not attack with the um, the uh, the Livera because uh, he went to Samuel and Samuel did not have Brave. So here, uh, I uh, in hindsight uh, or, or, it's, or it's not even hindsight, it's more like I uh, forgot what half my card did. I did I did not remember if uh, Turia needed to swing a van or not. So here I just go Anj and bounce his board, um, but. Uh, after actually reading the card, I realized that uh, I should, I probably should have just gone. Um, I probably should have just gone. Uh, what's her face? Uh, Turia and Saturio is actually probably lethal here. This is this was definitely not lethal, unfortunately. So uh, he just played out an extra turn, which is like whatever, I guess. Uh, I'll bounce his board, but I get to put all this stuff back down anyways on the next turn. So here we go for uh, this. We flip whatever. As you see here, my G zone. I don't have the uh, the Megido. I just completely forgot about it. But yeah, we CB2, he bounces his hand, we draw one. And we just call and we just go, we just go face, hope we see, uh, I, I basically I was just praying he died here, but he actually didn't, he actually did it, so he had to play out after turn, which kind of sucked. Yeah, he, he does this. Very cool, very cool. And uh, you see here, Ange only gets to drive if you uh, bounce. Uh, was it seven? Maybe about seven. I only mean, bounce five. Only bounces board. So yeah, no, no extra drive for me. And my board is actually completely full here. So I was actually pretty screwed because uh, as you can see here, I don't exactly have the best hand to stride next turn. And I also can't try for free either because I have a full back row. So uh, yeah, uh, he goes into uh, this guy and he puts the intercepts back out. So pretty annoying here for me at the very least. Yeah, uh, yeah, he does. He does this thing. Good for him. Uh, Plus a stand too, like really good for good good for you, bro. Double stand. But uh, his board is kind of a mess here. It's like no boosters. He has like two intercepts in the back. Uh, I don't think he used this. I sure wouldn't use this here. I don't know what you'd be using this for. Yeah. Right, just whips whatever. He push, push, checks me once, pushes me a five, and uh, puts a tough deck stride fodder. Uh, so I'm tossing, obviously I'm tossing two to stride here for obvious reasons because I don't have an actual grade three and I cannot stride for free. Uh, here I'll just like, does this thing need a swing ban? And I think here I realized this thing did not need a swing ban. So yeah, last turn I should have just, last turn I had two extenders and oh, I would have had open CB but I didn't go into on. So would have been like rear, rear, ban into rear and then I would have checked him. Uh, how many more times? One, he had three ints last turn. So one, two, I guess he wouldn't have that. I guess I, Actually, no, he would have died because my my cons would have been bigger, so he would have had to double hit one of the swings, probably, probably at the very least. So, yeah, I uh, I probably did not need to ultra uh, call it. Um, I probably um, put an end the game last turn. And here, you actually get to see the the um, the stride bonus put an extra card back because I drew a card. I put the CC back so I could get a soul and a CB back so I can actually extend with the grade two that I top back into. And uh, as you can see here, I'm also relatively close to the deck out, but because this deck's entire gimmick is uh, puts up to the bottom of the deck, uh, deck out usually is not a concern with this deck. Because uh, a lot of times you're putting stuff back for cost, and you like, usually you like, 
end up going like plus one to deck size a lot, a lot of times, especially with Tertia, because uh, you put three back, you drive, you re and you draw one for the reset, so you, it's like a net positive two for the deck, for our deck count. So here you, you see me put my, uh, you see put my back row back to the deck, my front row gets a bunch of power. And there's like 10 different prompts here that I could do. So uh, we definitely use this one, the one that lets us uh, actually extend here. And uh, that was the one problem we could do because uh, I didn't have enough cost to play for anything else. So here, uh, he had four ints out, so we, this was only one check, but the one check was all we needed. And he gives another guard in hand, and he died. So there's that. Uh, lesson learned here is that Tyria works at swing at anything, not just at van. So yeah, that, that's a lesson learned there. Uh, next game, we play against uh, Asha. So yeah, wow. Well, uh, we just quickly go over again. Your mulligan priority is your grade three, so we have the grade one here. And another good thing with this grade one is that uh, if you slam this thing down early, again, uh, this thing actually has a use past uh, just searching your grade three. Like if this grade three gets to live, if they don't kill it, I just move it back, and then eventually it becomes a counter charge. So that's very very nice for that. So oh uh, yeah, uh, have uh, I definitely you definitely do learn to appreciate a grade one that searches your grade three ride that isn't just a stride fodder as a secondary skill that she has like a skill on board. Uh, there's like a, there's like a a bunch of stuff that's uh, that's uh, like this. Uh, another example I can think of is uh, Conroe, the grade one Conroe. Because though after searching Overlord, it's also a CC two. So yeah, uh, you definitely do learn to appreciate like a secondary skill on your grade one. So here, uh, I want definitely want to hold the extenders for the next turn, so we don't push here. We just move the green one back, save it for later, and yeah. Also, no reason to use the starter here either, because I actually want to keep the green one as a uh, CC for later. And uh, this definitely looks like a very outdated Asha deck, so... Uh, opponent definitely does not, does not have like a very good optimal deck, but then again, Asha kind of sucks regardless, so... Eh, not the, not the, not, honestly, not the biggest difference. Asha does Asha things. Asha really should have gotten Jingle Plier back, in my opinion. Uh, all, all Jingle really does is shut down bad decks. And uh, the good decks would probably still dump on you because, you know, like, there's a limit to how much 21k intercepts can be doing in this current meta. A lot of decks can just punch over them now, so yeah. Obviously, it's still annoying, but, you know, uh, I, I don't think Asha, even with Jingle back, would make it a meta dominant deck like it used to be. So it's just, 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 a, little, just a little thought there. Not that that matters now, obviously. We're obviously not getting anything buffed and changed or anything. And here again, I didn't have Stride Fodder, but I did have four of that card, so I just two, threw two of them out to Stride. Obviously, they're not the best because they are your extenders. But uh, in this scenario, I just tossed them because I needed to Stride. And here, I probably would just Stride Bonus here. I think I'm just thinking if I want to use it or not. Yeah, so I guess I don't, so it's fine. Because I do already have all my extenders and stuff in hand, and I will be drawing three. Uh, after this, because of the, of my uh, what you call it, because of uh, Lapria, you put two back, you draw three. They'll swing. And here, I think I just put uh, probably a CC and like my starter back, probably if I had to guess, just from looking at this board, from what I would do here. Yeah, so you put you back, draw three, and then you just use the girl on the left side to to be your extender. So you do this, uh, she's 21 now, and then now uh, you CC and you, and uh, you do not use the one on the, on the right side because you don't have, one, you don't have a booster for it, and two, you're not sealing properly. So a defensive would absolutely just shut it down. So you, you, you would have to have been super greedy here for it to work. So we did hit two triggers, so that left side is like guaranteed, was guaranteed to hit after the first one. But uh, if we played super greedy and that was not a defensive, we actually could have technically pushed for, tried to push to uh, five here, but there was a defensive and I didn't even do it to begin with, so yeah. Uh, no reason to burn resources here. So again, I think this deck does actually need its soul and its CV. Uh, soul more so because uh, a lot of your skills take like us like one soul, so you like slowly burn through all of it. So it definitely is uh, good to keep in mind uh, holding your resources. And here, I already had open CV, I, and I did not need to put it back to let me try for free on the next turn. So uh, no reason to actually put the great one back here. Just keep it as booster for the next turn. Uh, so we just quickly go through their turn. Their first stride is multivitamin. Haven't seen that in a while. And uh, yeah, so uh, he does his thing. Blah 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 blah. Very big van. Coley heals again. It's whatever. Uh, Asha does not really have the best kill power, regardless of uh, how updated your deck is. Uh, but because he healed, I also got the heal. So very very nice there. 
Yeah, we'll just uh, quickly go through our turn. So here, our turn, we just uh, go into the... Um, oh, I guess we'll... Uh, oh my god, fucking the, the skip is so bad! Yeah, but uh, here... Uh, he does his turn. Cool, cool, cool. Good for him. Yeah, we heal, and then we'll go into our turn. Uh, 3, 6, and 8. Uh, here, you'd probably consider tossing the stride again, just because... Uh, you draw for turn, you're at 9, so you don't want to go overhand for obvious reasons. You probably do want to draw whatever you're going to draw into for stride, so... Here, I'd probably... Yeah, you probably do want to just toss for stride. And here's probably an argument where you're like, or it's like, oh yeah, you might want to play some extra... Play like crits or something instead of all these draws. Uh, but again, uh, without these draws, I might not have all these extenders in my hand. So, you know... Uh, it's, like, it's like a give and take trade, right? Like, you, you know, this like, definitely can facilitate your aggro triggers, but at the same time, if you play your aggro triggers, uh, you might not draw into all your pieces that you need. And uh, obviously, draws help with early game as well, because uh, early uh, hit, hit, hitting early draws means you get to... Uh, whatchamacallit? Um, uh, hitting early draws means you get to... Uh, uh, actually commit more stuff down early, so there's that as well to consider. So here we have two extenders. Oh yeah, so yeah, so the grade two girl that gets resist, she gives resist to the front row. Not, not, not uh, all your grade two hires in the front row get resist, and they all, and they also get boost. Yeah, so here we hit a trigger, we push, we damage, and now we put three back. So one, two, three, and we put our front row back because they're just gonna replace themselves anyways. So no reason to put the back row back and then just call over it. So. Yeah, no, no reason to um, mess up my board, my board state. And here, this is the one bad thing about this card being extender is that if you check top five and you just don't find an intercept, you just uh, don't get an intercept to call. <laughs> but yeah, so that, that's like, that's like the one bad thing about this card is that if you just don't find intercepts off the top, you just don't get to call them. You might end up having a uh, non intercept in your front row, so that really sucks. But here, as you can see, we still hit for numbers, so uh, we're still scaling over all of this. So, uh, yeah, uh, so the first one's not offensive, so that's skilled, and then now Bane just pokes for a heal card. So this went from potentially two checks to only one check because my opponent healed, so that sucks there. But it's fine, we have more than a guard in hand. That's another good thing with this deck, is this deck uh, with Lapria, it cycles really, really faster than X, so uh, you draw through it, you cycle and you draw through a lot, meaning you get to, uh, you'll probably draw into your PGs more often than not, for, uh, for the most part. And here we use this. I just use both and just clear them off the board. And here's where you can actually consider using the grade 2 here. Because this was like a, a newly called one. Uh, you definitely could have considered here to, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, to uh, call over the grade 3 again. Intercept over that so you can keep double int. But the main reason I shotgun both the grade 1 here is because I do not have double int. Because I don't have double int here, uh, if I kept even a single grade 1 on the board and my opponent did not kill off my grade 3, I could not strive for free here. And as you can see here, I'm out of grade 3s in my deck, so I can't actually touch that stride fodder. So... Uh, I actually needed to clear up both the grade ones here because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to try to free on the next turn. So that's also something to keep in mind if you don't have double intercept, uh, you need probably you should probably clear out your back row. And here my opponent goes into whatever the fuck this thing is. I have no idea what this card does. I I don't even think I've seen this card before. I don't think I've seen anyone actually going in this card, but first time for everything, I guess. Uh, we'll just quickly go through his turn. He I actually do not know what he's doing here. Uh, what his turn? Uh, what he's doing here so for his turn? So. He does this thing. Uh, uh, we just go, uh, we'll just start here, yeah. So you can see here, um, we go into Tridia again. And uh, we do have two extenders in hand, the one of coming in handy here being another extender in the deck. And uh, yeah, we just go to town here. Um, so uh, the usual rear, this is a very standard, you just go rear, rear van and then uh, Depending on what extenders you have, you put stuff back to your deck accordingly. Depending on what you um, have on your board. Uh, for sure, I'm just out of triggers here, so I uh, can't see triggers at all, obviously. But, you know, you hit for giant numbers anyway because of the um, the because of uh, her skill, so yeah. So draw one. Uh, skill, the one from the deck. CV one, check top uh, five. Hopefully find an intercept of some sort. We did find one. You can call her over the slot that she was in. Skill, she's also an extender here, so CB1 for back to the bottom deck, draw one, and then call one from hand, so we call her. And now, uh, the one from the decks that uh, we put back for cost initially actually does matter here because uh, uh, 
we, but the additional 5k will let the card that's by herself swing for a PG check, because if I didn't have, uh, if I didn't put her, uh, her back and get something plus 5k, that only would have been a heal card, so here, we swing for uh, the equivalent of 4 PG checks here for this turn, because everything was scaling for over a heal card, so very, very nice there. Uh, I think he actually did put heals back in there, so I don't know if I he he would draw into it or not, but yeah. Uh, you can see here, I think I, I think that last turn probably showed up with this deck's, the ceiling of this deck, what this deck can do. This deck just straight up asked for 4 PGs from 5, obviously. Uh, a lot of decks can do that nowadays, but you know, it's still pretty impressive this deck can um, can actually ask for all P all PGs from 5. So uh, they didn't have all 4, they just kind of died, so yeah. Uh, but that is it for this deck profile. Uh, again, I think it's just a 4 fun deck. But obviously, you know, uh, four fun decks are still fun to play. That's their air for fun decks for a reason. So yeah, uh, tell me guys what you think about the deck down below in the comments. Like and subscribe, all the good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.